So I figured out how to use Apollo GraphQL with AppSync. So I'm going to be showing you how we can take the project that I built yesterday and use Apollo for that instead of using the AWS Amplify React components. So here we're just going to follow the readme for Apollo client to get this set up. So we're going to install these packages and I'm just going to come over here to the command line and grab those. And then we're also going to include React Apollo in that. And then when this is done installing, we also need to install the types for GraphQL. So I'm going to say yarn add as a dev dependency at types GraphQL. Everything else already has TypeScript types, so we're good to go with those. Um, and so next, we just need to configure this in our director here. So I'm going to copy what this is. And I'm going to paste that in there. So here's we're just importing Apollo Boost here, the Apollo client, and we're passing the URL where a GraphQL server is at. So how do we know what our URL is? Well, if we come to this AWS exports file over here, there's going to be one that says GraphQL endpoint, and we can just copy this endpoint right here. Uh, and that's what we're going to use to, that's what we're sending our request to. And then the second part we have to do is uh, this is actually a server only we can access or not everyone, it's not a public one. And the way that we authenticate is by sending up an API key. And this API key is right here. It's this AppSync API key. So we're going to copy that. Um, and we're going to come over here and we're going to add a header uh, or a headers. So how do I know what this, this header should be, right? Uh, is it, is it API key? Um, or is it something else, right? So if you come over here and uh, let's add this real quick. So I just added this library. Uh, we also need to update our TS config before we continue on. So in our TS config, we just need to add async iterable there. Um, and then this should compile. I think I have to restart the server though. Let me do that. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, just refresh the page and look at the network requests. And in the network requests, we can see uh, what the header that we have to pass to the GraphQL server. Um, and again, I just need to comment this out because we're not using it yet. So comment both those out, refresh. Um, there we go. And so if I inspect this, I can go to the network tab and I'm just going to refresh the page so it loads again and I can see all the network tabs. I'm going to click the GraphQL one. I can also just up here filter for GraphQL. And then I can see if I bring this up, um, I can see right down here, I can see the request headers and then there's this API key. And so they call it X API key. So we're going to use that same name. All right, so we can get rid of, um, well, we're gonna remove this later on, but so we have our client here. We also need to import the Apollo provider from React Apollo. Uh, come back over here, Apollo provider. And then we're just going to wrap our app in that. And then we just need to pass in our client to this provider. And now we're able to make GraphQL requests with Apollo since we have the Apollo provider wrapping our app and we have our client configured to pass in the credentials and go to the right server. So let's start by redoing our blogs over here. So I'm gonna be using the query component and that gets imported from React Apollo up here. And we're just going to do our usual rendered prop there and then I'm going to just wrap this entire thing right here. All right, so we just wrapped the entire thing in the query and I'm now going to pass my query in. So this list blogs, we can actually, we can, we're still going to use all the components that uh, Amplify set up for us or AppSync set up for us. We're just not going to be using this GraphQL operation and this connect component. So we're going to be using list blogs here. Now you'll notice List blogs though, if we click on that, it's just a string. So we can't just pass a string into this. We need to say GQL. And this is the first time I've ever just called GQL as a regular function. So that's coming from GraphQL tag. Um, so just call as a regular function, passing in our string there. 
Uh, and then here I'm gonna add the types, which is the whole reason why I'm switching over. So here I can say list blog uh, query. So this is something that uh, is coming from the API. That's something Amplify already creates for us. Now for whatever reason, if it wasn't created for us, we could use the Apollo CLI and generate these types ourselves based on the schema. All right, so we got that. So right here I have my query and now I have all of the props that I'm used to with Apollo. In this case, the thing I care about is the data and the loading. Um, and so let's go ahead and I'm gonna make this a curly brace there, remove what I have there and put a curly brace down here as well and get rid of this connect. All right, there we go. Um, so now we have this bit here and here I'm just gonna check and make sure we want to say data and data could possibly be undefined so I'm going to say if we're loading or we don't get data then we can do stuff and then from data we can get list blogs the list blogs can also be possibly null so if we don't get that uh, and then also items can possibly be null so list blogs dot items so if none of these things are null we can then map through and render it as we were before. Um, and the reason why we're having to add these extra conditionals is because we actually know the type definitions now of this, so that's nice. And I can hover over and see all the stuff that I could get from it. Um, so that's that, and now let's go ahead and test this out. And if I refresh the page, you'll notice we're still able to grab um, the items okay and it works just the same. So let's do the same thing with our form over here. Well, I guess we put it inside of index, uh, or sorry, app. So we're gonna replace this connect with a mutation. So I'm gonna say mutation. And we're just gonna wrap the connect. And then here I'm gonna say mutation. And again, we're just gonna wrap it with GQL and then use the create blog that we're already using before. And then I'm just gonna add the types. So we're gonna say create blog mutation. And we also wanna import the variables. So we'll copy that and get rid of variables. So now I can pass in my mutate here or my function and get rid of the one we have from the connect. And then I'm gonna say mutate here. And now we have, uh, we can pass in the variables and I'm not sure if this was the same functionality as uh, Amplify or AppSync might have this as well, but we can now refetch our queries and that's gonna be an array and we're gonna pass our query. I'm gonna say GQL list blogs. So after we uh, send this request off, when we create a new blog, we're just going to refetch the data for our list blogs. So what does that do? Well, now I have a new Apollo blog and I hit save. You'll notice it's gonna pop up right here right away instead of me having to refresh the page. Reason for that is because we're refetching after the mutation is done. Uh, you can probably do this with um, AWS AppSync 2, or at least I would imagine. But now we have all the capabilities of Apollo at our fingertips. We can update the cache if we want to Oops, we can refetch queries. I'm now used to this because I've been using Apollo a lot and I get TypeScript definitions, which is super nice. Now, I'm not sure if this will mess up anything else with AppSync later. We'll have to see as I do more stuff with this, but for now, I'm liking this direction rather than using the connect component.